they're always good. Yeah, I mean that's not how most um Yeah. That's not how most places do it. Yeah. That's definitely how we try to do it though. Alright, we got two heavy boys. Expect to live to absurd percents. Uh, Sensei is a uh, is actually a New Jersey Snake player. I believe this is actually his first time entering. Uh, and DJP is one of the NYU boys. He's been uh, he's been showing up to uh, Casino pretty steadily overall. Apparently, like he's just recently become freed up, so now this is why he's entering Casino Wi-Fi. Ooh, okay, good jump out by DJP to, to avoid the grab. He knew it was coming. Oh my goodness. A crazy amount of damage right there on Sensei. And he was just barely out of the range to get the uh, the forward smash. And we're already seeing like DJP is putting in a great amount of damage. DK is no slouch. Uh, if you give him any kind of advantage, he's actually able to do a lot of work. And an interesting interaction there with the down B hitting Snake's toes on the up tilt. Uh, he's he went for the big boy read. And yeah, no, like, DK is super heavy, and he wouldn't have died if he hadn't he had it all there. And not even, like, a flash. Alright, great use of the explosives by, uh... Oh, no. Oh, who's dropping? Who's dropping? Who's dropping packets? Oh. He's dropped a bunch. Jeez, man. Yep. You can see right there the, uh... Sensei going for, uh, for a sticky tactic, which is actually pretty good against heavies. Uh, it, can it can allow you to kill them a lot earlier than you should be able to. Uh, just because uh, back throw to, to C4 explosion, if it's sticky on them, is a true combo. Oh, down air not going to be quite enough to finish it, but you know what? Uh, the Nikita is... Nikita is super strong. Especially like when it's being... Oh, and Sensei not realizing. The Z4 was underneath him. Going for kind of a suicide tactic there. Okay! Oh, okay! Interesting! Interesting use of the, uh, the up tilt there to, to nullify the, the everything. <laughs> oh, and the, like, just literally the first hit. Oh my goodness! That was... <laughs> DJP just went for it! He just, he got sticky! He was like, since they just went for like this, uh... I don't want to say disrespect because it definitely would have killed. But since they went for this sticky and actually got it onto DJP, but DJP just turned around, bonked him on the head. This man was grounded and because there's no longer reduction in knockback from, um, from getting hit out of being grounded, uh, Giant Punch is gonna kill super early. I'm not sure if, um, that was like kind of a low percent too. I'm not sure if it was because, uh, Sensei just wasn't expecting to get hit by that. Like he wasn't expecting to get, uh, to get grounded or what it really could have been. Please tell me you're not waiting for us. DJP, please, dude, just start the match. Oh, DJP uh, taking another bold, another bold move to not start the match. It's okay, DJ, DJO. <laughs> there you go, you got it. I had to frantically do it while replay was going. Oh. <laughs> JP, what's going on, bro? It's literally just question marks flying back and forth. Ready? Okay, they're starting. Uh, I think JP just got like got distracted by something. I don't know. Whatever, man. Alright, Sensei immediately running it back to PS2. 
honestly not an unwise choice overall. Uh, the stage is pretty good for Snake. It offers him like a lot of platform coverage, which is great for C4s. Um, not 100% certain why he didn't opt to go to Battlefield. But hey, it, uh, it's working out for him so far. Mortar coverage is pretty good. And that's a shield break. Yeah, no, nah, man, sometimes you gotta take the hits even though you don't want to. Uh, either that or roll. But uh, you can't be shielding at uh, against Snake against at the ledge because if he gets a single, if he gets two mortars on you and an out tilt, that's gonna break your shield, no matter what. Yes, yeah, Sensei like overall having a much better start here, doing an insane amount of damage to DJP, and using the platform wonderfully to put to cover uh, to cover that F smash. He's just daring DJP to come in and not like in an unsafe manner. Oh, we finally have. DJP getting a little bit of momentum. This might be the stock if he, uh, if he times his attacks properly. Oh, and that's gonna be death. Uh, so Nikita does have a. Uh, if you hit Nikita with a hitbox, it will lose its hitbox temporarily. However, you need to actually hit it. Uh, if you do what DJP did there and try to delay your up B specifically so you don't get hit by the weak hit, you're gonna get hit by the strong hit instead. And again, like a tiny tap coming from uh, DJP's up B. Just sending Sensei into the air, but this time Sensei didn't go for the, uh, for the sticky or another tactic. And a really interesting use of the, uh, the down smash. To get the uh, to get the kill from Sensei, uh, he must have guessed that uh, the DJP was going to air dodge back onto the stage. By mistake, he probably wanted to go to the ledge and not get back onto the stage. And that was a three stock. Jeez, man. All right, so now we're gonna get um, DJP's band. We're gonna get Sensei's bands now. That might have been a little bit of demoralizing for DJP, but I'm sure he could bring it back. He'd actually play that a first match extremely well, all things considered. All right, he banned Town and City and Yoshi's Story. The question is now, where is DJP gonna try to take him? Is he gonna try to counter pick? Uh, DJP does have a Diddy. He plays both the Kongs. So there's a very strong chance that he might choose to switch, although whether that's a wise decision or not, especially considering how uh, close the first game was, we really will have to wait and see. Alright, so we're going to Smashville. Smashville is actually an incredibly good stage. For... K. Okay, Rural? Oh, you must have missed choice. Oh, he's actually going K. Rule. Okay, interesting. I'm not sure what uh, what DJP is trying to do here, but all right, I, I feel it. K. Rule is a super underrepresented character overall in uh, Smash Ultimate. And he doesn't have the worst match against Snake overall, honestly. Uh, he has a he has quite a few moves that are actually pretty effective with how Snake plays uh, the mid range, but you know what he's got to be he's got to play very carefully, especially like when he when Snake is on the stage, Snake does have the superiority in projectiles overall. Okay, good use of fair, pushing uh pushing Sensei off the stage. Honestly, uh. K rules. Uh, K rules up air is no slouch at all. It's an extremely powerful move. It sends him up high, but you gotta time it properly. Uh, you're not going to. Oh, and a really bad awareness coming from JP. You need to really pay attention to the uh, to the C4. 
And Sensei getting comboed out of the grenade into up air. Crap. Probably wasn't intending that. And that's the second sticky that Sensei's gotten. I actually really respect the sticky usage. Uh, sticky C4 is extremely powerful overall. Okay. Okay, I'm feeling it. You know, good combos. You got K. Rool combos here, man. The ground actually giving uh, DJP a pretty decent um, mid range tool. But you know what? That lack of awareness on. Um, that lack of awareness from DJP about the C4, man. You keep getting hit by them. You gotta, you gotta pay attention to where they are. When a player like uh, when a player like Sensei realizes that you're not paying attention to where his C4s are and you're just kind of standing on top of them because you're trying to play the range and that's kind of the set. There's no way in hell he's gonna mess this up. You know what? Uh, K. Rool does get like a super a certain amount of super armor per uh, per set, but you can't just keep throwing out those hits, man. If you get a if you get your shields broken, that's gonna be instant death. And like that, uh, Sensei moves on. He's going to be taking on Beast next. So you guys, the trick with, uh, the trick in the matchup isn't to be looking for when, um, isn't to be looking for the C4. It's to be paying attention for when Snake drops the C4. Because the C4 is meant to be hard to see. And honestly, uh, there's a small red flash that accompanies it when it lands on the ground. But, you know... If you're not paying attention to it and you don't look, you don't keep in mind exactly where it dropped, of course you're going to get hit by it because it's tiny. Alright, I'm going to put on 